happy Friday! So for today's video, I decided I was gonna do a Q&A video from questions asked from you guys. I asked on my Facebook and my Instagram what questions you guys had. There are so many questions that I just get asked repeatedly and it just is too much to sit there and like answer people back individually. Although there were over a thousand comments or a thousand different questions, I took about 30 of them that were my favorite or were that like the most asked questions on there and figured that I would answer them in this video. As I was scrolling through all these questions, I did see a bunch a bunch of questions that were asked that I have already answered in previous videos I do encourage you to go back and look at some of my FAQ Friday videos back when I did those That is something that I'm thinking about doing again in the future So a lot of the questions that people ask I have answered either in FAQ videos or in another Q&A video that I have So if you don't hear a question in this video being answered that could be because I have already answered it in another video So I do apologize. I don't want to make it too repetitive for those that do watch all of my videos I just picked pretty much like the most common ones or the most interesting ones for this video So I'm gonna go ahead and get started because like I said, there's about 30 questions that I wrote down So we just need to get right into it under the moon doula asks Will you delay cord clamping after birth? And this is something, if you haven't heard of this, I highly recommend researching it, doing your own research with it. I absolutely am going to delay the cord clamping with this birth. Um, typically with home births, that's just like what you do. It's not even like a question. I started researching it with my pregnancy with the twins. And at the time, I wanted to delay the cord clamping but having to deliver in the OR and like everything that was already going on it unfortunately just didn't work out that way with Landon I did delay the cord clamping with him because it was a home birth and with Lilia I had absolutely no idea what it was and we didn't do it so we are absolutely planning on delaying the cord clamping after uh, this baby's born AMAXO asks will this for sure be your last baby and this has got to be like one of the most top questions that I got on there because after I had Landon, I said that I was done and I 100% believe that I was done. I had no wants or desires for another baby after Landon, but after meeting Chris and just our relationship and just seeing the family dynamic that we had, we did decide to have one more together. But, sorry, you might see kids walking back and forth. I can 110% say with no doubt in my mind that I am completely done having children. This is 100% my last baby, so sorry to let you guys down if you wanted me to have more. Natalie Dot Sutton asks, what is your middle name? My middle name, I'm pretty sure this has been said before, but my middle name is Jean. It's the same as Lilia's, which is the same as my mom's, which is the same as my grandma's. So that's a middle name that has been passed down through a bunch of the girls in our family. Anne Marie 95 asks, where are the kids going when you go into labor? And I have talked about this just a little bit, but I don't think I've actually made like a video saying it. And it's going to be the same plan that I had with Landon. The three boys for sure are going to go with my grandma, Gigi to be exact, because there's a few different ones. They are going with Gigi and they're going to stay there for a couple days while I recover, depending on how everything goes. So that is the plan with them. As far as Lilia goes, it kind of really just depends because we don't really know for sure if she's going to be here for the birth. It's going to completely 100% depend on the time of day, where she's at, how she's feeling, how I'm feeling. And we're just going to have to like take that step by step as far as if she's going to actually stay here or if she is going to go. But if she does go, she's most likely just going to go with her dad and he'll keep her few, for a few days because that's obviously not a problem. So that's what we're thinking right now. Of course, it totally just depends on the day of the week that it is, what everyone's plans are and all that stuff. But we do have different like scenarios planned out for the kids to go somewhere. So that way I can labor at home and have at least a, like a little bit of time to recover. Taylor.Marie asks, do you ever plan on moving? We absolutely plan on moving eventually. We are not sure at all if it's going to be sooner or later at one point we were thinking it was going to be sooner and now we're kind of have mixed feelings about it so um it kind of depends on the market it, we do plan on buying a bigger house though in the long run amy x mckissick i'm sorry if i totally slaughtered that asked when are you going back to school so obviously if you've been following me for a while you know that i do have my associate's degree however i'm definitely 100 percent going to go back and further my education it kind of again just depends Definitely sometime next year. It probably won't be spring at this point. Maybe summer or maybe fall semester of next year. And I haven't decided exactly how that's gonna work out yet, but that's the plan for right now. The timeline isn't like 100% set in stone. Orion Guzman 98 asks, which gender will you be more shocked to find out 
that the baby is. I think, honestly, I will be more shocked if it's a girl at this point. I have just switched back and forth and back and forth this whole pregnancy about whether I think it's a boy or whether I think it's a girl. And I think just the fact that I've had so many boys in the most recent years, I had the twins, obviously, and then I had Landon, and then I had two stepsons come into my life. A boy would just feel more natural to me to like, give birth to so a girl again I haven't given birth to a daughter in obviously like almost seven years so <laughs> I think I'll be more shocked if it comes out a girl than if it's a boy Dawson dot fangirl asks did you always want a big family I 110% always wanted a big family but I didn't always necessarily see myself having this big of a family I always just wanted to be a mom that was always just something that I wanted some people just want to be parents some people don't and that was something that I wanted since forever for as long as I can remember and if you asked me growing up how many kids I want I always wanted four I always said four so obviously things are a little different now but having a big family in general is definitely something I always saw myself um having leah.b24 asked who do you think the baby will be more like you or chris I honestly have no idea I definitely feel like the baby already looks more like Chris but it's kind of hard to tell as far as the way that it's going to act that's I mean that's just too early to tell I have no idea um, I can say however that my and Chris's personalities are very similar we're both extremely stubborn we both kind of gave our parents a run for our money I think I can say at, at the very least that we're definitely gonna have our hands full with this one and on top of that it is gonna be a Scorpio and I have heard mixed things about having raising a Scorpio I've heard it's kind of difficult so so, oh, we'll see about that. Wish me luck. Emily Jean? Janae? Emily Jean? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm totally failing at this. 33 asks, real or fake Christmas tree? I just thought this one was fun. I always, always, always get fake Christmas trees. Growing up, we always had fake Christmas trees, and one year we decided to get a real one, and we had a terrible experience with it. So, although I love the smell of real Christmas trees, I don't like to clean them up. I don't like what might be inside of them when you bring them home, and I just don't like the hassle of, like, getting it here and all that stuff. I'm so lame, I know, but I'm definitely pro-fake Christmas tree for our house. <laughs> Megan Matt Mackie asks, do you plan on getting your tubes tied after this pregnancy? If not, what is your plan for birth control? So this is probably the number one question that I got asked on everywhere. Everybody wants to know, what are you doing for birth control? Because this is your last baby. So obviously birth control in the past, I haven't had the greatest experience with. I've either gotten pregnant on it or I've had terrible side effects from it. After thinking about it for a long, long time and having lots of discussions about it, we have decided that Chris is going to get a vasectomy after this baby is born. So that is our plan for birth control. Definitely something permanent and something that's not going to cause any sort of like hormonal imbalance with my body because it's, that is just completely unreliable, I feel like. Becca Hart asks, do you fear as a mom that one of your kids will feel left out because of how many kids that you have? This is actually something that I struggle with a lot. Although I have never witnessed it, none of the kids have ever expressed this to me. I do kind of have this fear in the back of my mind of like, what if one of the kids does feel left out? I really, really, really try to make conscious decisions as far as little things that I can do to make all of the kids feel wanted and it's very important to me that my kids get some sort of like one-on-one -on -one time or like m a more focused attention like with less of them around as often as I can so like birthdays for example a lot of the times I'll try to take kids on birthday trips with just one or two of them and then little things like going to the store or running an errand and just bringing one of them with me and getting to talk to them and really bond with them it's little things like that that I feel really help me feel like I'm really giving them each the equal amount of time that they deserve. None of them have ever expressed that to me and I hope that if they did feel that way, they would express that to me, but I definitely make a conscious effort to make sure that I give them all individual attention as well as um, attention as a whole. <laughs> Buffalo Girl asks, is Chris more excited or nervous for your home birth? I think it's definitely a little bit of both. Um, I can definitely sense that he's nervous about it. He's never experienced a home birth. I've only had one, so it's not like I'm like a pro either. So I mean, I'm nervous about it too. But I think both of us are just genuinely excited to just like meet this baby. But I think we're definitely both a little nervous about having a home birth and him more so obviously because he's never been through it before he's never even experienced a natural birth as far as his like his other kids go his other kids it was like a typical hospital epidural like how my first pregnancy was and so he hasn't even experienced a natural birth let alone a home birth so i definitely think that he's probably a little bit nervous about this laura vuris I'm sorry. Asked, do you think Lilia will act differently towards the baby based on its gender? Um, 
Lilia is such a like natural born mother. She loves taking care of her brothers, taking care of, not like I leave her in charge of her brothers, but she likes doing little things for them and acting like she's their mom and getting them a cup of water and helping them with their food and helping them get dressed. She has just always been, had that sort of attitude. So I think regardless of the gender of this baby, she's definitely going to bond with them in that way. However, she has obviously expressed a huge desire to have a little sister. And although right now she says that she wants a little sister. I'm not sure how it's going to actually play out in the long run if she does get a little sister. I think she really likes the thought of having a little sister more than maybe like when she actually gets here. So I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I think no matter what, she is already a fantastic big sister and I think it's just going to continue to stay that way regardless of the gender. Kaylee Marie XO asked, do you think Landon might be jealous of the new baby since he's been your baby for so long? Chris and I have talked about this a whole lot. I definitely think he's gonna have a little bit of a hard time adjusting. I think the thing that's going to be the hardest for him is, is having to share Chris's attention rather than my attention because right now all day long I'm like between like school runs and all that stuff He's used to me dividing my attention among everybody else when Chris is home He and Landon are just like this they are inseparable a lot of the times I'm doing homework with somebody or running that someone to dance class or going shopping or doing something else Chris helps out obviously with all the other kids and he helps me do stuff with them too But for the most part, it's no secret that Chris and Landon have a very 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 close bond And so it does worry me a little bit about when this new baby gets here and having to share his attention more so with Chris than it is with me. Boo It's Jada asks, which kid is most excited for the new baby? I definitely think it's a tie between Big Caden and Lilia. They're the ones that talk about it the most. They're the ones that ex have expressed the most interest in the whole situation. So definitely the two oldest are the ones that are the most excited. J underscore FA5 asks, how soon after you have the baby will Tommy and Caden be able to see the new baby? So I've talked about the custody schedule. A lot of people were asking about what our custody situation is with them. I talked about that in so many other videos, but to sum it up, during the school year, we get them a minimum of one weekend a month. Most of the time, it's two weekends a month. And then we get them for the majority of summer break and then most of all like the school breaks and stuff like that. It really just depends on when the baby's born. We do get them for all of Thanksgiving break this year. So regardless, they will meet the baby at that point. We're wanting to get them um, the first weekend possible after the baby's born because obviously they live six hours hours away it's not ideal to just like take them from school to come meet the baby that's not fair to them or fair to anybody so um, our plans are the first weekend after the baby is born we're gonna try to get them up here for sure we're gonna have them the weekend of Thanksgiving so that's only two weekends away so it's not gonna be long after the baby is born that they'll get to meet their little sibling as well so Z Metrovich asked what is your natural hair color and I get this question so much that's why I put this in here but this is my 110% natural hair color I dyed it a few different times through my YouTube journey you guys got to see that disaster worst mistake of my life it looks terrible this is 100% grown out 100% natural I do absolutely nothing to my hair this is how in fact this is how it is when it gets out of the shower it's dead dead straight bright red with like little streaks of blonde in it. Jess Bryant XX and several other people asked, how often does Drake see the boys? Um, this is something that I talk about so, 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 so much, but I see this question so often. So I'm just gonna touch on it just a little bit again. He's allowed to visit with them two days a month for up to eight hours as far as if he actually takes that visitation. He has about a 50% rate of showing up. Well, I'm gonna say no more than about eight hours a month usually. It can be more, but most of the time that's about what it is. He does not do overnights, he does not do weekends, he doesn't have anything like that. And then of course holidays and stuff like that we are supposed to split. So that's what the situation is right now. So I'm not gonna get into all that. That is just like a whole, whole different, I could make like, three full videos talking about like the custody situation, but I'm just not going to do that right now. That's just the fact of it right there. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Gabby is Rosso <laughs> asked, how do you and the kids handle being recognized in public? Do you ever get worried about them growing up in the public eye? So we get recognized in public probably like 70% of the time that we're out in public, whether I go to like Target just in my local city or if I go on a trip somewhere, I'd say more likely than not, 
somebody comes up to me and like recognizes us and I honestly love it the kids love it Lilia and the twins they sort of sort of sort of slightly understand it Lilia has had little girls actually come up to her and say that her mom and dad and that her um, watch her videos so she's had her own experiences that she tells me about like later I like when people come up to me and say hi I always encourage people if they see me in public to come say hi as far as them growing up in the public eye that's like something that I think about all the time and I think it's just something that we have to kind of take day by day the kids don't fully understand it and they've they grew up in it so they don't really see it as being different or weird but obviously I have my concerns about it and I don't know I honestly don't know how long we will continue YouTube. It could be for 10 more years. It could be for 20 more years. It could be for one more year. It just really depends. So, I mean, it's just, we just kind of take it day by day. KRM4174 asks, how would you feel if your home birth didn't work out and you had to deliver at the hospital? Obviously, it would be upsetting because that's not what I planned for, but I trust my midwives and I trust um, everybody, my, my whole birth team so much that I know that to get to that point, they would have had to have done absolutely everything in their power to make that not happen. And if they were transferring me, it would be for a very important reason. So I would absolutely trust them. And at the end of the day, the baby's health and my health is the most important. So if that happened, um, I don't think I would be too upset about it. Mama Ralston asks, do you think the baby will be a redhead? Chris really, really wants the baby to have red hair. He loves my red hair. I think it would be really cool to have a redheaded child, but at the same time, I hated it. Hated it growing up. So now I like it, and now I'm like able to embrace it, and as I've grown older, I've been able to find things that work with it, but I absolutely hated being a redhead when I was a child, so I have mixed feelings about it, but I do think it would be absolutely adorable to have another like mini redhead in the house. Fiona Davy 93 asks, would you ever consider moving to a different state? If so, which one? So most of you guys know I live in America. I live in California specifically. And honestly, I absolutely love California. I don't see myself ever, ever moving out of California. I have no desire to move to any other state. I absolutely love where I'm at. I mean, obviously things can change, but I love California and I would never want to move away from it. Megan Myra asks, if the baby is a boy, do you plan on leaving him whole like your other sons or has your opinion on circumstances? circumcision changed. So I've talked about this um, multiple different times. I think most of you guys know my stance on circumcision. I am against circumcision. All of my boys are intact. If you're wondering why, I will link a video down below talking about why I chose not to circumcise my boys. Disclaimer, that does not mean that I think that you are a bad mom if you chose to circumcise your boys, but I am against it for my own family and I am still to this day 100% against it and my son will not be circumcised. And a lot of people were asking how Chris felt about that too. All it took was uh, one discussion with him about it and then he was like pretty much sold on it too so he doesn't have any problems with it either miss dot vos asks are you getting your umbilical hernia repaired after the baby is born or are you waiting to see if you might want to get pregnant again in the future so as i've said multiple times i'm definitely not planning on having any more children and i am 110 percent planning on getting my umbilical hernia fixed as soon as possible after delivery because it causes so many problems so many back problems it's so uncomfortable to just deal with at this point the muscle separation that i have and the hernia that i have but i've been told through the few doctors that i have seen is that it is so large that it can't really be fixed anymore just by exercise size itself so I'm definitely planning on getting that surgery and starting that whole journey as soon as I can some of them told me you have to wait at least a year some of them were saying more like three years after you have a baby so I don't know that's gonna be a whole journey that I'm sure you guys will go through with with me but the answer is yes I'm definitely planning on getting that fixed Lindsay Balduk Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I just slaughtered these names. Asked, why doesn't Chris vlog anymore? And you know what? I want you to ask him that because it's not that he doesn't want to vlog. We just haven't really had a chance to. And there's been a couple times where I was like, why don't you vlog? Like, why aren't you vlogging? He like bought a camera and he was like all excited about it. And he, th he honestly, honestly, he thinks he's boring. And that's why he doesn't like to do it. He truly feels like he has nothing to talk about. He goes to work, he comes home and he helps with the kids. It's not that he doesn't want to vlog. We just haven't really had a chance to put him in another vlog, I guess. So he's not like not vlogging anymore. It's just the, the mere fact that he, there hasn't really been a time recently where he felt confident enough to like pick up a camera and vlog what he was doing. Cecily underscore AAAA asks, do your kids 
ever get annoyed with you vlogging all the time. Honestly, none of them have ever expressed any sort of like dislike for the camera. Right now, when I was bringing my camera out and setting it up, they're all, I wanna make a video, I wanna make a video, I wanna make a video. So they all absolutely love it, but they did grow up in it. They don't know any different. They've literally grown up with the camera in their face since the second they came out of the womb. <laughs> none of them have ever expressed a dislike for it, and they all actually seem to like super duper love it. So not to my knowledge, that I don't, they haven't really ever gotten annoyed with it. Des Marie J asks, are there any kids that have a closer bond or do certain things together? Definitely Landon and Big Caden. Landon looks up to Big Caden more than I think he looks up to like anybody. And he loves all of his older siblings, but him and Big Caden are just like this. They absolutely love each other. Caden loves Landon. Landon loves Caden. So that's um, one of the bonds that I've seen over time that is just like they have a very strong bond. The twins obviously have their whole little twin bond thing. They do everything together. But a different bond that I've noticed has been between Lilia and Kyson. They get along very, very well. They have very similar personalities. They enjoy playing together more than some of the other kids do, I guess. So those are the two that really stand out to me is Big Caden and Landon and then Kyson and Lilia. Those are the two ones that I've really noticed. Emma underscore Schultze asks, can you talk a little bit about Kaden being tested for being on the spectrum? So I have mentioned this, I don't think I've ever actually mentioned this in a video, but I have mentioned this in comments and I've mentioned this like on um, Instagram and stuff like that. A lot of people have notice different little things that Caden does that come off as being on the spectrum, meaning like some form of autism. And I have noticed it myself as well. So he is in the process of being assessed for autism. That is kind of a long process. So that's something that we are going through. And he is very, very, very social. So that's the hard part about putting any sort of diagnosis on him, if it's even a diagnosis at all. He doesn't meet a lot of the symptoms of being on the spectrum, but he does have a few little things here and there that make you wonder. So I did decide to go ahead and get him assessed and that's just a really long process that we're in the middle of I have had his speech assessed because a lot of people notice that Caden does not talk as well as Kyson I had it professionally assessed by a speech therapist that is in our area. It was like three different meetings. She observed him at home, she observed him at school, and we had a meeting talking about everything that he does and all that stuff. And so that part of the assessment is completely over, and she said that there is no concern whatsoever for any kind of speech um, problems with him. He is 100% where a typical four-year-old should be. A lot of people see how well Kyson talks compared to how well Kaden talks, and Kyson is just a lot more articulate than Kaden is. She said that it's very, very common. You see it all the time about one twin being the stronger talker than the other twin, and their whole life it's been that way. It's always been Kyson that's like talked for Kaden. They like have this language with each other, and then Kyson will come and talk to me about it. And so she said that that's very common. She assessed Kaden's speech, and she said that there's no concerns at this point. Oh, no, Although he doesn't talk as well as Kyson does, he still very much is where he needs to be for his age. I just wanted to be proactive about the whole situation. So it's not that I think that Kaden is autistic or is on the spectrum somewhere or that I thought that he like had speech problems, but I just want to be proactive. I've had other people notice it. I've definitely noticed a couple little different things. So I'm just trying to be proactive with that and that is something that we're doing currently. Mackenzie asked, did you expect or think you'd have so many boys. I honestly never saw myself having this many boys. The only time I ever really, really wanted a specific gender was with Lilia. I always saw myself having a girl first, and then after that, I think I remember wanting to have, like I don't know, sort of an even number of boys and girls. I never saw myself having five boys and then a possibility of six boys, um, but honestly, I, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not that I never wanted boys. I just never like pictured my life looking like this, and it's really fun to be honest the whole dynamic that we have is really fun so yeah but I definitely didn't see myself having this many boys oh my god I'm gonna totally slaughter this one a Maynard a Maynard 0017 asked do people ever make negative comments about the size of your family on YouTube where people are just like keyboard bullies all the time but I see them constantly as far as in person like to my face I have never ever ever gotten a negative comment to my face about the size of our family. And friends, family, people in my life that like actually matter 
all think it's like the most awesome thing ever. I've never gotten a negative comment about it. Obviously, I can support them financially as long as their needs are being taken care of and there's roof over their head and food in their mouths and I'm not like living off of the system and just like, keep popping out babies. I don't see anything wrong with it and it doesn't seem like too many people have a problem with it either unless it's just like an online troll. I think this is the last question that I have. Angel PQ02 asked, what do you see for your channel in five then 10 years? Do you see yourself leaving YouTube when the kids are like 10, 11, or 12 years old? So I touched on this just a little bit. Um, I honestly, completely honestly, have no idea. In five years, I would think that I would still be doing it, but 10 years, that's a long ways away. And I mean, so much can happen in 10 years. I obviously plan on furthering my education and eventually becoming a teacher, but it's all just gonna really depend because a lot of YouTubers don't talk about this. Not a lot of people talk about how much people, like YouTubers make, and I'm not gonna tell you guys how much I make, obviously. To be completely honest, and this might come off as kind of bad, but it kind of just depends on our financial situation. A lot of people don't talk about how much YouTubers make, but YouTubers can make a lot of money, enough for me to be able to stay home with my kids, further my education, and financially support each of them. Obviously, Chris works too, but I am 100% able to financially care for my children just based off of doing YouTube alone. So we're definitely comfortable income-wise as far as me continuing YouTube. So in the future, if that dies down, that's definitely gonna have a, an effect on if I were to start up a career that didn't allow me to do YouTube or where YouTube wasn't a good idea to do hand in hand. And although I love making YouTube videos, the only reason I would ever stop making YouTube videos is if I had to move on with my career and that career did not allow me to make YouTube videos as well. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's the only reason I can see myself stopping YouTube is if I had to for some other job purposes. But like I said, I don't, it we really just take it like day by day, week by week, month by month. Everything is just very, very much dependent on how like everything else in our in our life is going. I hope I'm still doing it. I'm planning on still doing it, but so much can change in that time frame. Obviously, look at the last five years of my life. Like it's completely different. I think that's kind of where I stand with that. I hope I answered that one okay. I think I got all the questions. I'm like sweating. I'm dying here. Like I said, there were thousands of comments on the particular post that I told people to ask questions on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm definitely planning on doing more Q and A's in the future, so don't worry if I didn't answer your question this time. Hopefully next time I'll get around to that one. So that is it for this week's video, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like these kinds of videos. I don't know how people feel about Q and A's. Hopefully by the time I do my Monday video, I will have this baby already. I am due in two days now. At this point, I'm not really counting on it, so. We will see. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. I'll have those links down below. We post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That concludes this week's Friday video. So I will talk to you guys on Monday for our next video. Bye. Baby's head down, that's not an issue, but the baby's spine is against my spine, which can cause a longer labor, a more painful labor, and a more difficult delivery. So 